Hello students, in this video I am going to discuss about the electrolytic cells. An electrolytic cell is a device that is used for the conversion of electrical energy into chemical energy. So simply in an electrolytic cell what happens? Electrical energy will be converted into chemical energy. Here I am going to discuss about the electrolysis of different types of electrolytic solutions. Initially, let us discuss about the electrolysis of molten or fused NaCl solution. An electrolytic cell consists of two electrodes dipped in an electrolytic solution and these two electrodes are connected to the battery. Here, in this case, the molten NaCl solution acts as the electrolytic solution and the two electrodes are made up of platinum or graphite. These two materials are inert in nature. That means they do not take part in a chemical reaction. Always the electrode which is present on the left hand side acts as the anode and it is connected to the positive terminal of the battery whereas the electrode present on the right hand side acts as the cathode and it is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. So whenever these two electrodes are connected to the battery then the decomposition of the electrolyte takes place. In this case, the NaCl dissociates into Na plus and Cl minus ions. So, here what happens? NaCl dissociates into Na plus and Cl minus ions. During electrolysis, the cations will migrate towards the cathode and the anions will migrate towards the anode. So, sodium ions will migrate towards the cathode whereas the Cl minus ions will migrate towards the anode which results in a redox reaction. What is meant by a redox reaction? Redox reaction means it involves both oxidation and reduction. Oxidation means loss of electrons. Whereas, reduction means gain of electrons. Clear students? What is meant by oxidation? Oxidation means loss of electrons. Whereas, reduction means gain of electrons. So, here in this case, at anode, what happens? Anions will be present at the anode. So, the Cl minus ions undergoes oxidation which results in the liberation of chlorine gas with the loss of two electrons. Always remember that at cathode what happens? Reduction takes place. CR stands for reduction takes place at the cathode and oxidation takes place at the anode. That means AO stands for oxidation takes place at the anode. So, here at anode what is happening? The chloride ions are undergoing oxidation and that results in the liberation of chlorine gas at the anode. Coming to the reaction at the cathode. At the cathode what type of ions are present? Cations are present these cations that means the sodium ions undergoes reduction by the gain of electrons. So it results in the formation of sodium metal. So finally the sodium metal gets deposited at the cathode. So during the electrolysis of molten or fused NaCl what happens? Sodium metal gets deposited at the cathode and the chlorine gas is liberated at the anode. So from this example it is very clear that simply by seeing the electrolytic solution we can predict what are the products formed at the cathode 
and at anode so in this case that means during the electrolysis of molten sodium chloride what are the products formed at the cathode and at anode at cathode the sodium metal gets deposited and at anode the chlorine gas is liberated let us apply to the other electrolytic solutions here the electrolytic solution is molten naoh solution so during the electrolysis of molten naoh solution what happens students the sodium metal is deposited at the cathode and here the anion contains oxygen as one of the atoms then simply oxygen gas will be liberated let us see the corresponding reaction so anions will migrate towards the anode here the anions are oh minus ions okay they liberate two electrons and gets converted into water with the liberation of oxygen gas and two electrons so oxygen gas will be liberated at the anode clear students so let us apply the same principles to the electrolysis of molten potassium nitrate solution here the metal is potassium so at the cathode the potassium metal will be deposited here the anion is nitrate so it also contains oxygen as the atom and hence oxygen gas will be liberated at the anode clear students in this way during the electrolysis of any molten electrolytic solution simply by seeing the electrolyte we can predict what are the products formed at the cathode and at the anode clear students now let us discuss about the electrolysis of an aqueous electrolytic solution here let us consider the electrolysis of aqueous nacl solution aqueous nacl solution means nacl is present in water that means in this electrolytic solution along with nacl water will be present so during electrolysis what happens nacl dissociates into na plus and cl minus similarly water dissociates into he plus and oh minus ions so here in this case in the given electrolytic solution two cations and two anions will be present here we have to identify which cation will be discharged first and which anion will be discharged first at the corresponding electrodes so for that purpose we have to follow one basic principle that always an ion with lower discharge potential will be discharged first at the corresponding electrodes irrespective of the fact that whether it is a cation or an anion so for that purpose here we have to follow two rules one is with respect to the cations and the other one is with respect to the anions so coming to the cations if an electrolytic solution contains two or more cations then the cation with lower discharge potential will be discharged first so here the noble metals such as copper silver gold platinum always have lower discharge potential than h plus ions so always noble metals will be discharged first and h plus ions are having lower discharge potential than other metals so in the presence of other metals always h plus ions will be discharged first other metals means lithium sodium potassium calcium magnesium aluminum zinc iron and nickel is it clear about the cations discharge potentials let us move on to the anions with respect to the anions 
always halides except fluoride that means fluoride bromide iodide are having lower discharge potential than hydroxide ions that means always chloride and bromide will be discharged first with respect to the hydroxide ions and hydroxide ions are having lower discharge potential than sulfate nitrate and fluoride so hydroxide ions will be discharged in the presence of sulfate nitrate or fluorides so from these two rules we can predict what type of anions and what type of cations will be discharged first at the corresponding electrodes here in this case we are having two cations and two anions let us consider the reaction at the anode so anions will migrate towards the anode here the anions are chloride and hydroxide ions from this principle it is very clear that chloride is having lower discharge potential and hence it will be discharged first so at anode what happens the chloride will be discharged first and it results in the liberation of chlorine gas next coming to the reaction at the cathode here again two types of cations are present one is sodium ions and the other one is h plus ions from this principle it is clear that the h plus ions are having lower discharge potential than sodium ions so the h plus ions undergoes reduction at the cathode and it results in the liberation of hydrogen gas at the cathode is it clear students so at cathode hydrogen gas will be liberated and at anode chlorine gas will be liberated so by following these two principles we can predict what type of products formed at the cathode and at anode during the electrolysis of any type of electrolytic solution so in the present case what are the products at cathode and at anode here it is aqueous nacl solution so at cathode what happens hydrogen gas will be liberated and at anode what happens chlorine gas will be liberated let us apply the same principle to two other examples one is the electrolysis of aqueous copper sulfate solution here copper is a noble metal so it will be discharged first at the cathode so at the cathode what happens copper metal will be deposited and coming to the product at anode here always the oh minus ions will be discharged first that means oxygen gas will be liberated at the anode and let us move on to the electrolysis of aqueous potassium iodide solution here the metal is other metal that means the h plus ions are having lower discharge potential than the potassium hence at cathode hydrogen gas will be liberated whereas at anode what happens the chloride ion the halide ion is having lower discharge potential than oh minus ions so iodine gas will be liberated at the anode is it clear about the electrolysis of aqueous nacl solution and other examples so simply by following the two principles we can predict what type of products will be formed during the electrolysis of aqueous electrolytic solutions clear students next we are going to discuss about the a special case that means till now we discussed about the electrolysis of any type of electrolytic solution in the presence of inert electrodes inert electrodes means if the electrodes are made up of platinum and graphite they do not take part in a chemical reaction so 
there will be no interference but if the electrolysis is done in the presence of active electrodes that means the electrodes are made up of the same material like the electrolytic solution so for example let us consider the electrolysis of copper sulfate solution with copper electrodes so here the electrolysis is done by using the copper electrodes that means copper electrodes are active electrodes so in this case let us consider what happens at the anode and at the cathode there will be no change at the cathode so at the cathode what happens the cu plus 2 ions gets reduced into copper metal and coming to the reaction at the anode here sulfate ions are present but remember that because we are using copper electrode it is an active electrode the copper starts dissolving that makes the difference so in the case of active electrodes what is the reaction at the anode the metal starts dissolving by liberating the electrons you have to remember always what is the reaction taking place at the anode so at the anode what happens the metal starts dissolving is it clear students so whenever the copper sulfate solution is electrolyzed by using copper electrodes what happens at the cathode at the cathode copper metal will be deposited but at anode what happens here we will represent the equation the copper starts dissolving and gives cu plus 2 ions always you are supposed to identify what is the reaction taking place at the anode during the electrolysis using active electrodes let us see two more examples coming to the electrolysis of agno3 solution with silver electrodes here again these are active electrodes so no change takes place at the cathode that means at the cathode silver will be deposited and can you guess the reaction at the anode at anode what happens silver starts dissolving so ag will be converted into ag plus ions with the liberation of electrons clear students similarly let us apply to the electrolysis of nickel chloride with nickel electrodes so during the electrolysis the nickel will be deposited at the cathode and coming to the reaction at the anode the nickel starts dissolving so we will get nickel ions at the anode is it clear students in this way even during the electrolysis of any electrolytic solution with active electrodes we can predict what type of reaction takes place at the anode clear students here i am going to conclude this video by giving two test questions so you are supposed to identify what are the products formed at the cathode and at anode during the electrolysis of molten nah solution and aqueous gold chloride solution clear students if you like the video don't forget to like share and subscribe thanks for watching have a nice day